Hello students, welcome to my channel, Medical Courses Made Easy. I am your Dr. Chandrasekhar. Today, I want to discuss an important topic and the subject of pharmacology and the topic under general anesthesia, where often you will get uh, some questions for five marks or three marks. The second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia. So most of the things what I observed was uh, students used to either ignore this to topic in general anesthesia or they write some wrong answers because they didn't understand the concept. So I want to just throw a light on this uh, two topics. So you may be thinking that if I just type in the YouTube that uh, about diffusion hypoxia, second guess effect, I may get lots of other explanation also. But what speciality in this explanation is at the end, I'm going to give you the tips. If at all it is asked in the examination, how to write and how much to write the answer for the same question. Because most of the times from other channels, you would have understood the concept, but execution may not be proper. How to write in the examination may not be proper. So I'm going to address that issue in this video so i request you to just keep a attention till the last and at the end if you like then please subscribe and share so let's start today's topic second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia we'll start start with the topic second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia the subject is pharmacology. The topic is general anesthetic. Now, this is what more question you'll get in the examination or maybe in the viva. What is second gas effect? And explain diffusion hypoxia. So we'll start with the first topic, right? The second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia is seen only with inhalational anesthetic agent that is nitrous oxide right now what is the second gas effect now nitrous oxide is a gaseous anesthetic agent it is highly insoluble in blood please make a note of this it is highly insoluble in blood it is administered at a concentration of 70 to 80 percent that's why it's low potency because it's given in High concentration is low potency and it has high partial pressure that means it acquire rapid equilibrium between alveoli blood and brain now you have to understand what is this partial pressure isn't it so we we'll just see in the next slide okay you can see here partial pressure means the pressure exerted by a gas in total volume of a mixture of gases for example, now here what you can see is the mixture of gases and what you can see, the partial pressure of both the gases together added becomes 7 millimeters of mercury. But if you take individually, the gas A exerting the partial pressure of 4 mmHg and gas B is exerting the partial pressure of 3 mmHg. So which is having high partial pressure here? A because here 4. But in a mixture, when you add these two, seven millimeters of mercury, isn't it? So this is called as partial pressure. The pressure exerted by individual gas. Higher the partial pressure, higher the induction of anesthesia. So let us just understand with a diagram. Now let us see this diagram. Nitrous oxide is a gaseous inhalational anesthetic agent. It has a low blood solubility. You can see the molecule size is bigger, low blood solubility and high partial pressure. Okay. Uh, but given at the concentration of 70 to 80 percent, that is potency is low. Remember that. So when you start giving or administering this anesthetic agent, rapidly it fills up the alveoli. Soon after that, it fills the blood and immediately it fills the brain or the CNS. So it takes very, very less time for induction. This is one of the advantage of this nitrous oxide. 
okay so that's why it cause rapid induction so we got one concept isn't it so nitrous oxide low solubility high partial pressure rapid equilibrium between the alveoli blood and brain and rapid induction so what is the advantage of nitrous oxide due to high partial pressure and low solubility rapid induction it also has a good analgesic effect if you see about the irritancy or the odor it is neither pungent nor pleasant so it is neutral coming to disadvantage it has a poor muscle relaxant activity so you may have to add one more muscle relaxant to want to induce the anesthesia with this agent it is less potent as the concentration administered is 70 to 80% isn't it much higher you have to give here so concentration what you have to give is very high that's why it is less potent more the concentration lesser the potent less the concentration more the potent right so that's why it is less potent now one more very very important topic is it is always administered with 25 to 30% of 100% oxygen 25 to 30% of 100% oxygen as it produces a phenomenon called as diffusion hypoxia now the diffusion hypoxia concept i'll deal with in the second topic right so this will keep it as secret now moving on to the one more anesthetic agent called as halothene halothene on the contrary is a volatile liquid anesthetic agent highly soluble in blood and it is administered at the concentration of 2 to 4% that is it's more potent than the nitrous oxide it has low partial pressure when compared to nitrous oxide so equilibrium between the alveoli blood and brain is slow we'll see and understand so we'll see understand with the diagram you can see halothene high blood solubility you can see the molecule size is very small here so it has to go and fill all the compartment first it has to fill the alveolar compartment it takes much time after it fills here then it will fill the blood compartment then it takes much time then finally it will come and fill the cns or the brain compartment so the equilibrium attained with the halothene is slow hence induction is also slow so if you see the advantage of halothene it is highly pleasant in terms of irritancy or odor compared to nitrous oxide it has a good muscle relaxant activity but it does not cause diffusion hypoxia when administered or withdrawn as we have seen in nitrous oxide so i told i will tell you about the diffusion hypoxia in the next topic the disadvantage is it is high solubility and low partial pressure so due to that factor it has slow induction right now when you administered the nitrous oxide i told it is always administered with 100% oxygen because to prevent diffusion hypoxia that we are going to uh, deal in this next topic here the oxygen becomes the first gas nitrous oxide becomes the second gas and as it is taking the halothene along with it as a carrier in this case the induction of halothene also becomes faster so nitrous oxide with halothene cause rapid induction on the contrary if it are given halothene alone it would have cause slow induction now we came to know that this concept is called as second gas effect the first gas is oxygen the second gas is nitrous oxide and because of this second gas the halothene even though it is a volatile liquid anesthetic agent the induction become faster aided by nitrous oxide this concept is called as second gas effect okay now why we combine this we are given nitrous oxide alone or we are given halothene alone if we are given halothene alone as you know even though it has lots of advantage but it is slow induction we are given nitrous oxide alone but why why we combine this why we have to have this second gas effect so when you combine 
is nitrous oxide with oxygen and halothane. So these two I'm going to deal in the next slides. So we'll talk only about the nitrous oxide and halothane here. When you combine these two and give, it's a fast induction. Anyhow, nitrous oxide gets faster induced, isn't it? Anyhow, anesthesia gets induced faster with the nitrous oxide. So when you combine with the halothane also, it tends to go faster induction along with nitrous oxide. The dose of individual anesthetic agent can be reduced to one third than the usual dose for the same level of the anesthesia. If you want to get the same level of anesthesia, the dose of individual anesthetic agent can be reduced to one third. So adverse effects profile is reduced. You get a smoother induction of anesthesia and there is no diffusion hypoxia, right? So now we'll just go to the secret of the next slide. That is what I told diffusion hypoxia because that's, that may be uh, you know, troubling your mind. What is this diffusion hypoxia? Now I think you know, came to know what is second gas effect, right? So here second gas effect is nitrous oxide is taking halothane along with it so that the induction becomes faster even for the halothane and the advantage of combination of these two I have already mentioned. So what is this diffusion hypoxia? Now, as I told, both the concept is seen only during nitrous oxide. So in diffusion hypoxia, it is seen only while administering or withdrawing the gaseous inhalation acidic agent like nitrous oxide. So administrative nitrous oxide will be done with the control setting where it enters the alveoli to blood and finally to brain, which produce anesthetic effect. This already I told you, isn't it? It rapidly enters the alveoli, alveoli to blood and blood to brain because it is having low solubility high partial pressure, it rapidly equilibrates and induction is faster. But after the procedure, after the procedure, when you withdraw the nitrous oxide, it rapidly diffuses into alveoli, which leads to lesser concentration of oxygen, leading to diffusion hypoxia. Now, I'll just go to the next slide and show you how this works out, okay, with the diagram. Now we just see these two sentences that this is not a problem in patients with good cardiopulmonary reserve, but in patients with respiratory pathology, it causes respiratory distress. Hence, 100% oxygen is administered for three to five minutes via inhalation, while administering and also while withdrawing the nitrous oxide. Now we just understand this with a diagram. Now here, while induction, when you use nitrous oxide, this is the alveoli. So when it expands its alveoli, the concentration of the O2 falls. Anyhow, it has entered the blood and it has entered the brain also. Here it produces the anesthetic effect. When you withdraw also, there is the rapid reversal of diffusion from the brain to blood and blood to alveoli. When it comes to alveoli or when it diffuses to alveoli, again the concentration of the O2 falls. And because of that, there will be lesser concentration of oxygen that leads to diffusion hypoxia. Understood? Hypoxia means loss of oxygen or less oxygen, isn't it? So to prevent this, while administering only, we administered along with 100% oxygen. So even if it rapidly expands this alveoli, the concentration of oxygen will not fall because already additionally we are already giving this. Anyhow, it has went to blood from there to brain, and when we withdraw the anesthesia, also this rapid diffusion from brain to blood, from blood to alveoli, even when there is a chance of falling of the concentration of O2, we already given this 100% oxygen for two to three minutes so that that decrease in the concentration of oxygen can be compacted, isn't it? So then there will be no diffusion hypoxia. So this concept is called as diffusion hypoxia. Now, what the question arises in your mind, how to answer this in exam? I understood the concept now. If you're not understood, again, go back and see it from the beginning, you'll understand. But if they ask in the exam, how to answer this, what to write in the examination, is it it? Now, if they ask you, the question second gas effect you start like this when highly soluble anesthetic agent like halothane having high potency 
and low induction is administered with low soluble anesthetic like nitrous oxide with low potency along with oxygen leads to rapid and smooth induction here nitrous oxide acts as a carrier for halothane anesthetic agent leading to second gas effect isn't it so what you are going to write for diffusion hypoxia if they ask in the examination so we start like this when nitrous oxide is administered at the concentration of 70 to 80% it rapidly expands the alveolar spaces and the concentration of the oxygen falls and the same thing happens when it is withdrawn or when it is discontinued rapidly it causes diffusion hypoxia this is not a problem in a patient with good cardiopulmonary reserve when they have a normal physiological function but in patient who already are suffering from respiratory pathology it may cause respiratory distress hence 25 to 30% of 100% oxygen is administered while administering or withdrawing the nitrous oxide so this is the answer for diffusion hypoxia hope you would have understood both the concept of second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia so if you like this video first subscribe to this channel like share comment go to descriptions and click the first link to see the feedback of the students about my coaching and other details if you want to see my other videos previous videos just see the link in the description please press the bell icon and get the latest updates of the education videos if you need any assistance in medical topics are related write to my mail what is mentioned here i also will be giving the description box you can contact me with this phone number right for more information you can contact me here hope you have enjoyed and understood the concept of second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia until we meet next time here Stop the chin shaker. Signing off from this class. Bye.